A song for their mother, in English. And Chinese. Twin brothers Julio and Dino Wakonchi are a classic mix of East and West. Effortlessly switching between languages and breaking cultural barriers. Their striking good looks and ability to sing and write songs have earned Solar, as they're known, a strong fan base, mostly in Chinese communities all across Asia. But what many might find surprising is that they're not Chinese at all. The Asian in us is really through my mom, and she's from this ethnic tribe called the Karen people, which from Burma, Myanmar, and so we have actually Karen blood, yeah, and our father uh, was from Italy. They were born and raised in Macau, at the time a Portuguese colony. It's now part of China. Portuguese is one of the languages that Giulio and Dino can speak fluently, along with English, Italian, Cantonese, Mandarin, Spanish, and French. They can perform in all, and say their love for music was instilled since birth. We've pretty much always uh, loved singing since we were babies, according to our mom. She, we were always singing and uh, she encouraged us to, to sing and uh, she would b buy us a lot of uh, little instruments, you know, these plastic ones like harmonicas and little keyboards, anything just, just to keep our curiosity going. They taught themselves how to play instruments, having no professional training. I've had a lot of friends who were musicians who were older than, than we were that uh, were very happy to show us, you know, a few things. So we took whatever we could from whoever we met. So we're not uh, formally trained musicians, uh, which is also why we, we, we have this certain rawness and very uh, naive approach to, to the way we perform and the way we write. But the characteristic that makes Solar so unique has also presented challenges by others trying to fit them into a certain mold. We went to a high school, and the, and, the, and the lowest class there was primary five, I think, for us, right? So when we went in there, that was, it was a school with 2,000 kids, and then that was predominantly Chinese. That's when we started being called Guai Zai. Cantonese for white boys. But it was quite the opposite when the brothers left Macau at 17 to live with relatives in Italy. It was there that they first tried to make music for a living. I remember meeting, uh, the, we, we met a producer. We were, uh, at that time, we were still signed to EMI, and uh, we went into the studio, and the first time we meet this producer, his first comment was, gosh, you guys are tall. I thought Chinese were shorter than this. <laughs> and it was his first comment, and I was thinking, since when have we you become Chinese? <laughs> yeah. We're in good hands. We're in good hands here. <laughs> they called themselves Solar, their mother's surname as a tribute to her, and released a single sung in Italian. They recorded two albums, one in Italian and one in English, but neither made it to store shelves. People in Italy didn't quite know what to make of the Asian-looking duo and their music. We were quite relieved when nothing came of it because we felt the songs were very uh, immature and uh, at, at all levels, and we were still very immature as artists, and we still needed to, to, to give it time, you know, to, to go out there and, and play more. So they moved to London to mature as musicians. Solar spent two years playing in bars and clubs on the underground scene. Then it was back to Asia, to Hong Kong, and the competitive world of canto pop. Okay, we left Europe, we left Italy, because they kind of expected us to sing Italian. And they said, oh, okay, we tried it and it didn't really work. We came over here and we were afraid the same thing was gonna happen, and, and it did. They said, no, I think you guys are great, but you need to sing in Cantonese. This time, they made a connection with audiences. People in Hong Kong were interested 
and impressed with the twin Guaizais who could sing in Cantonese. I woke up and found your Solar signed with hummingbird music and promoted their diversity, releasing double surround sound in 2005, followed later the same year with intuition. But when disputes arose with the record label, the brothers walked away. The move cost them big. In 2009, the Akonchi brothers were ordered to pay Hummingbird more than 650,000 US dollars. The dispute led others in the industry to think the Akonchi brothers were bad news. We had a dry spell. There was a period where nobody was calling us because, you know, because somehow in the general culture, you don't touch someone who has a legal problem. Damaged goods. Solar became independent and started its own record label, K Town Records. And going indie, gave the brothers a chance to determine their own path. They continued to write their own music, incorporating a mix of rock, folk and soul. It was their cover of a Hong Kong classic, however, that really caught listeners' attention. Because I was actually in a, in a cab one day and I heard this song on the radio. I heard the chorus, I said, this is an amazing melody. I asked the driver what the name of the song was. He said, I think, and I couldn't remember it until I went to the studio. We talked about it. And uh, this song made us known probably more to the north of China. For some reason, they love this Cantonese song and our version. <laughs> The song gave Solar a launching pad into the Chinese mainland, going over big with listeners in Guangzhou. Solar released two new albums, Canto in Cantonese, followed up with Vivo in Mandarin and a splash of Italian. Aside from music, Giulio and Dino have also branched into TV, acting and educating. Local Hong Kong broadcasters saw the brothers as the perfect pair to host programs about learning English. They've also hosted cooking shows and even a travel series on their beloved home, Macau. Their identity, through having no one specific identity, helped Solar bounce back from bankruptcy. But at the end of the day, it always goes back to music and the brothers' love of all genres. In the few hours we spent with them in the studio, there was no mistaking, this is their passion. What we normally do is we will just sit, one will choose to sit on one of the instruments and just start playing something. And something comes out of that jam session. So we jam we, a lot. We jam a lot. That's so what it's, it is. We, we yeah. don't necessarily say we're gonna write a song now. We'll just sit down and if there's a commission, say uh, somebody wants a jingle, because we do do that too. We do all sorts of music, right. also soundtracks. And so it's not only just like what, you know, our music. So it's a little habit we have, yeah. It's like and and it's a lot of fun. Dating around the it's a lot of fun. It, as long as it stays fun, the music will keep coming out. Love is a beautiful thing. But Solar doesn't want to be known solely as musicians. We don't want to define ourselves. I, I think, uh, especially starting from last year, we, we already began this process of seeing what will naturally lead us to, to happiness as opposed to having a great career. I think we, we're doing things that make us happy. And I think that is very important. And that's also the message we give to people. Doing what makes them happy has certainly helped Solar find success. Hey, man.